Today in the show we have Kune DeFi, Digital Identity Foundation now available on Google Cloud, the Cardano Partner Chains Toolkit, and much more. I'm your host, Mauricio Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. In the first drop today, we're going to talk a little bit more about decentralized finance. In this use case, we're covering two very similar use cases, but they are uh, very different in nature, although they might sound like a regular form of investment. We're coming on Kiln's new DeFi platform, which is supposed to simplify access to the rewards that are provided to stablecoin depositors in the world of decentralized finance. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about what Kiln does. Kiln is a institutional crypto staking platform, basically. What it does is that it facilitates for institutional investors to get access to a variety of blockchains that are based on proof of stake so they can stake their digital assets to secure those blockchains and get rewarded by the fees that are paid every time uh, their validators produce a block. What that means is that proof of stake blockchains will require validators to deposit an amount of digital assets native to that chain uh, to be able to be selected to produce a block if they produce a block, they get the rewards based on the block fees that are paid by the people who are putting transactions on the blockchain or smart contracts running on the blockchain. But if that particular validator tries to corrupt the chain, that stake might be at risk and be slashed or cut out uh, from uh, the validator uh, staking in uh, totality or, or partially which then creates an incentive for validators to be honest and ensure security of the chain. It's a uh, economic incentive type of uh, consensus protocol or a Sybil protection protocol. Uh, Kiln makes it easier for you as an institutional investor to actually deposit in a variety of chains. Uh, so that's their core business. This week they announced their Kiln DeFi which will, through the Crypto.com DeFi wallet, which is a self-custodial wallet, allow users to deposit stable coins in a variety of DeFi protocols and then get paid the interest in which uh, those stable coins will uh, be rewarded by those DeFi protocols. Usually lending protocols in the world of decentralized finance will accept a variety of different deposits, be it on the native cryptocurrency of that blockchain that they're operating or stable coins and people will deposit another form of collateral and then we draw um, stable coins or land stable coins from the DeFi protocol paying interests uh, versus the uh, deposit collateral or the um, payment installment um, in, in that particular protocol. That's how stable coins can yield uh, returns and um, DeFi is complicated, it's cumbersome, it's not the easiest uh, user experience. So, Kiln is actually facilitating that for the initial users uh, of crypto.com DeFi wallet, um, which is um, produced and built by uh, crypto.com, which is one of the top decentralized crypto exchanges. Um, in this particular case, the wallet is non custodial, meaning uh, it's self. Uh, custodial by the user or users uh, in that capacity. So institutional investors will be able to uh, do that operation on DeFi from that uh, DeFi wallet using Kiln's facilitated DeFi uh, protocol. Now, we've been talking about DeFi uh, very much in this show. And one of the things that I feel we're not seeing a lot from uh, these builders is how they get to manage the risks, because it's not only that your risks are financial, like you would have on a traditional financial uh, investment scheme, but there are other uh, new uh, emerging risks for emerging technologies, such as 
DeFi protocol. So I'm very interested in seeing how uh, Kiln and Crypto.com are helping these institutional investors to control and manage the risks. It's not that this um, is devoid of risk. Every, every investment has a risk, but these are emerging risks as well when it comes to DeFi. So having the proper tooling is important because it's not that risk is a problem in and on itself, but not being able to know and manage your risks is probably something that every investor should be aware and should have uh, at least some uh, form of tooling and, and management processes to do so. And investors in the institutional grade are obviously more uh, worried about it and, and, and have a better handle on their risks in general. So we'll keep tabs on this and we'll also uh, want to see what the competition comes up with when it comes to being able to provide a DeFi staking. In the second drop today, we're going to talk about a subject we don't often talk about and maybe we should talk more about, which is a, a very important um, primitive for the world, the decentralized world, which is decentralized identity. Um, it came to my attention throughout the week that the Decentralized Identity Foundation announced a partnership with Google Cloud where they will provide the community instance of the decentralized web node, which means that now people building on Google Cloud will be able to benefit from decentralized identity or DID or DID, um, as we say it in the industry. These are data stores that eliminate the need for individuals to trust other applications in using or protecting their data Data is owned and controlled by the individuals, which then offers the developers alternative ways to create apps that require interaction with someone's individual data or PII, the personal identifiable information. Uh, identity, digital identity or decentralized identity is a very important primitive going forward for two reasons, particularly one is data ownership that we've been talking about a lot here in the world of Web3 but also as more and more regulated industries come on chain, they are mandated to keep proper records of interaction with particular individuals or companies. And all of them require some form of identity and decentralized identity is obviously a very secure way and a very different architecture in which you can do that. A uh, very interesting conversation in the announcement. Uh, but interestingly, um, this is not a first foray of Google in Web3 or decentralization. Uh, Google Cloud has been doing a lot in terms of data availability as well uh, through uh, BigQuery enabling um, access to 12 or 15 uh, public blockchains. Uh, the decentralized web node, they are peer-to-peer -peer communication nodes that are foundational for uh, any dApps or decentralized applications in other protocols, they um, the the DWNs uh, live on devices and their data can be replicated in hosted instances such as the one in Google Cloud. These are data stores and they are serverless applications that will then allow developers to access the data without having the need for a centralized service or even an account on a centralized service. So it's ultimately a, a, a decentralization mechanism for identity. Um, the announcement from the DIF, because it's uh, supported by uh, TBD, which is uh, Twitter Jack's uh, Web5 uh, technology company, um, it's very interesting the way that they position this as a core foundational component of Web5, and it's an open source platform uh, for this peer-to-peer data exchange, uh, identity data exchange. Uh, having the ability to source that out of Google Cloud shortens the path between the user data being placed in one of these decentralized storages and the actual development or use cases. What is now interesting to me is how these things will play with say W3C verifiable credentials and other identity standards because if this is to be used across industries, standards is obviously the way to get there. In the third drop, I'll start with the disclaimer. This one has to do with my day job. 
uh, we're going to talk about the IOG release of the uh, Partner Chains Toolkit. The Partner Chains concept is something that uh, Cardano is introducing through Midnight. Midnight is my day-to-day -day project is where I'm the head of product. And this week, IOG, the builders of Cardano and the builders of Midnight, announced the Alpha V1 release of the Partner Chains Toolkit. The Partner Chains Toolkit will allow anyone to build a partner chain to Cardano using said toolkit and inherit some characteristics of Cardano to get it bootstrapped. Uh, we know how hard it is to launch a layer one. So by launching it as a partner chain, you can actually bootstrap using the pre-existing community, um, especially in the sense of Cardano, which is one of the longest running you know live chains in uh in the blockchain space in this v1 alpha release um, the toolkit allows new blockchain network developers to inherit the security of cardano by leveraging its uh, network of state pool operators or spos spos are cardano's equivalent of a validator or a miner in other uh, in other blockchains and by doing that if you're a new or an existing network, you can actually increase the number of validators of your ecosystem and, um, and obviously get more security in your own infrastructure. So this first alpha allows you to share security from Cardano. It allows you to create mixed validator committees. So you can combine committees of various kinds. You have consensus model flexibility. You can implement any consensus model. Uh, you can actually opt out as you graduate into a standalone layer one and you can request SPO participation. You can have validators from Cardano to actually come and secure your network. So Midnight is, as I said, the first partner chains using this particular toolkit. Right now, Midnight is on DevNet. So it's a public DevNet, is a public um, sandbox for developers to come and try the programming model, understand what the ledger offers and what the tokens can do and how you build zero knowledge proofs in the context of data protection. We're gradually adding new features to launch the next stage of the roadmap, which is the, the test net. And we are doing that in partnership with Cardano uh, validators or Cardano SPOs by using the partner chains toolkit that you can now Take a look uh, in detail using the GitHub's uh, the GitHub links that are provided in the article in the link in the description. So we'll bring you more news from Partner Chains and from Midnight as we are able to and as the data becomes public. And in a week packed full of news, here is more. The MCTI, Brazilian Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, launched Project Ilíada. It's a partnership between the RNP, or the National Network for Research and uh, Studies, and the CPQD, the Center for Research and Development in Telecommunications, and it's aimed to advance the adoption of blockchain technology in Brazil. There's a new EY report out. It's called How Retail Investors Are Making Digital Assets Part of Their Lives. And the new token launch resource is available by the A16Z Crypto Branch. It's a continuation on their earlier effort from this year. Franklin Templeton's Tokenized Money Market Fund is now going to be available in Arbitrum, uh, Ethereum Layer 2, and it's going to be available for institutional investors. Brazilian SEC is jumped ahead and approved the first ETF for Solana spot trading in the world. Ripple begins testing their stablecoin RLUSD on the mainnet on Ethereum and their XRP ledger. The new set of regulations for crypto in Turkey seems to be working. It's seen a 47 registration request wave since July 2nd. Russia legalized Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mining, and the law comes into effect in November of 2024. And finally, Emurgo, the VC fund in the Cardano ecosystem, has partnered with Sonarverse to expand data insights into the Cardano ecosystem.
catch us online. We're on Instagram at Block Drops Podcast, on Twitter at Block Drops Pod or Xerox Mauricio. We're on Lens at blockdrops.lens. We have a newsletter on LinkedIn. Write to us at blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. And you can listen to the Block Drops podcast at Spotify, iColab, Fabriban Tech, and all of the other major streaming platforms. Shoutouts today to the people who share the links you will find in the episode notes. Julia Soares, Prashant Kerr, Laszlo Zabo, Michael Dowling, Chris Dixon, Omar Hussein, and Cassio Gusson. Don't forget to leave the ratings on your favorite player. This is all for today. Stay rare, stay weird. LFG.